national championship game. There will be no defending champion here today. It's the Victoria Vikettes, who've won five championships in the last ten years against the Winnipeg Lady Westman, who, for their coach Tom Kendall, have never won the national championship. And let's outline for you the fine five starters for the Victoria Vikettes, first of all, who come into this game undefeated. Chris Van Art and Tara Galloway are the guards. They expect to feel some front court pressure. Jenny Sutton, outstanding player, lines up at center. Then Kathy Keats and Heather... Bowie. That's the way the Victoria Vikettes will line up. It's a good starting five. They'll play seven, eight, possibly nine players today. And both teams boast about depth. The Victoria Vikettes have some depth. Now, the Winnipeg Lady Westman believe that they have more depth. And Tom Kendall says if both teams go to the bench, he believes that it's his team that would work out just a little bit better. The Winnipeg Lady Westman had an outstanding record in the GPAC, 17-1, and one, and their starters are Michelle Chambers, Pam Flick, Andrea Hutchins, Larissa Wastruck, and Terry Martin, and of course, they'll bring Sandra Carroll off the bench. That's right, she's a, a powerful force, as you said in the open, the leading scorer on the team in this tournament. These are the Winnipeg Lady Westman who have the ball. They are in white, and they are going left to right on your screen. Pam Flick throws it down inside, attempting to get it to Michelle Chambers, and she has it slide off. And one of the things we're going to see here today is both teams are going to start in a zone defense. Victoria is going to pack the zone tight. They're in a 2-3 zone right now. And Winnipeg is going to spread the court on offense, swing the ball left to right, and try to get inside for the post players. Again, they have the big lineup in there now. They tend to get smaller and quicker, and there's the first shot of the game, and it's a good one. And you saw the pump fist from Pam Flick. Winnipeg Lady Westman say they're relaxed and loose. They feel they've got nothing to lose, and they feel just great about their opportunity. And they seem to have the feel of a loose team, don't they, Brian? Very much so. And you see them extend the defense. They did this throughout the tournament. Mostly this uh, half-court or three-quarter court zone press is just designed to eat up time and slow the tempo of the game down in the early going until Carroll gets in the game. Both Victoria and Winnipeg. Uh, both seem to acknowledge the fact that Winnipeg will probably play some four-court pressure. And the baseline jump shot about an eight-footer by Larissa Waschuk makes it 4 nothing. Now, Kendall's got to be happy about that because he's got two inside shots early penetrating against the zone. And this is something that Toronto did not do last night in their game against Victoria was penetrate the zone on the dribble. This is Christina Van Aert. She's their point guard. She likes to distribute the ball. Good outside shooter, but streaky. Speaking of streaky, there's Tara Galloway. It puts it up for three, and it won't fall. And it'll be a Winnipeg ball, so they lead it 4 nothing. We're just underway, and they've got an opportunity now. Now, here you see the tempo. You, you see the ball go into the left corner. They try to swing it around. They want to get the ball inside early. Tom Kendall says our philosophy is to go inside early, then go outside late in the half. Turnaround jump shot and a nice one by number six, Michelle Chambers. She's got a great turnaround touch, and they've got to get the ball inside to her because she has to be a force against some of the, the top inside uh, players with size on Victoria. Chambers had 15 in the national quarterfinal and 19 in beating Laurentian, and she comes out red hot again today. 6 nothing. Winnipeg. They were hoping for the quick start, and they've got it. Here's Jen Sutton, puts the ball on the floor and has to fight to get it back. Always tough to bounce the ball when you're in that post. Three on the shot clock, and Sutton gets it away and gets the roll, and she'll go for three. Strong player, and there's the experience factor, Michael. Uh, she bobbled the ball, got knocked away. You see her uh, come right back and present herself. She moved right in the crest of the defense, where two players were split, and uh, Galloway found her, and she's on the foul line for a possible three-point play. That was an outstanding play from all perspectives because there was two seconds left on the shot clock when she got it away and what looked to be a disaster now turns into a three-point play. And the Winnipeg Lady Westman with a three-point lead to have the ball. That's Pam Flick. She'll take the open shot. Won't go down. And here's Jen Sutton coming over the top. She didn't have position, but she outfought number 14, Terry Martin, for the rebound. Sutton, top of the key, and this is where things start to happen. Dishes down low. Double team, so she gives it up. They get it outside to Christina Van Aert. That's good for two. And now the six-point Winnipeg lead is down to one. Well, you'll notice they move the ball. Both teams move the ball very well side to side. When you see a zone defense, one of the things you want to do in basketball is make that zone play the entire court. The court's 50 feet wide. 
and you'll see Victoria move the ball from one corner to the other and then snap it back to the top of the key for an open shot. Double team on Michelle Chambers and she traveled, so Victoria can take its first lead of the game. I'm Michael Landsberg along with Brian Heaney and this is the national championship on TSA. Well, no one's afraid to shoot on either team. They've been loose, they've played loose in this tournament. Kathy Keats just drilled a jump shot from 20. She's loose, but she also has the experience to be able to make that shot. Here's Andrea Hutchins, Pam Flick. They want to get it inside to Michelle Chambers. She's number six. Five on the shot clock, better put it up. Baseline shot, won't go, it went down, then comes back out, but good position, but she won't get the ball, and three opportunities for Winnipeg. Uh, that's tremendous to see in Winnipeg load the offensive force. Tom Kendall, the head coach of the Lady Western, said three weeks ago they started to firm up their grip on a championship season by working emphatically in practice on offensive rebounding. Over 20 minutes of practice was spent on that one aspect, and there's three of them right in a row. I want to ask you in a few moments how you actually work on offensive rebounding, but let's see what Winnipeg has to offer. Feed down low. Well, defense playing, reacting very well to the ball was Kathy Keats, who forced the turnover. Six to five, Winnipeg, Lady Westman lead Victoria Viquettes. Christina Van Art, Tara Galloway, Galloway all the way across to Heather Bowie, Bowie goes baseline, kicks it inside, nice feed, and drawing the fouls, number 10, Kathy Keats, very good ball movement as you referred to before by Victoria Viquetz. And Heather Bowie really made that play, Kathy Keats is going to get the foul shots, but again we have an experienced player penetrating the zone on the baseline where it's difficult to get help other than from the post. As soon as the post moved to help, she dished to Kathy Keats, who got the shot. Now, how do you work on offensive rebounding? Well, it's all footwork. You've got to have great footwork for every aspect of the game of basketball, Michael. And it's footwork and reaction time. Concentration on that aspect of the game is required, and it must be emphasized in practice. On the release of the ball, you've got to turn and go to the glass. And they have to just track that with the coaching staff and their managers to make sure the players are reacting. Technically, it's footwork, but more than anything, it's the desire to do it, isn't it? Oh, you've got to have guts. And you also have to know that's where the win is at. There are several stats in basketball that are important. Offensive rebounding is an absolute killer. If you can dominate that phase of the game, you'll win. No reason for an offensive rebound here. Andrea Hutchins gives the Winnipeg Lady Westman a one-point lead. Approaching five minutes played in a very quick-paced first half of the national championship game on TSN. All the way across to Galloway, kicks it inside to Kathy Keats, and she draws the foul. Uh, that's excellent penetration inside. Whenever you see the zone, you want to, early in the game, get the ball inside and establish yourself. Also, one of the areas Winnipeg has had a problem in is staying out of foul trouble. Now they've got some fouls. Last couple of times down the floor, Victoria has penetrated and has had good position, and they've cut the lead to one. We'll be right back. Folks, if you like Rock'em Sock'em 1 and 2, you're going to love Rock'em Sock'em 3. It's a beauty. Coach's corner's in there. Lots of hits and goals. And my buddies Troy Crowder and Bobby Probert drop in for an appearance. And wait till you see my all-time tough team. Rock'em Sock'em 3. You're going to love it. That's the way things look from the bench of the Winnipeg Lady Westman. The score looks pretty good to them right now. They lead by one. They actually jumped up to a 6 nothing lead for Coach Tom Kendall and still remaining on that bench for the Winnipeg Lady Westman is their star player, Sandra Carroll. There's a look at Jen Sutton, one of the stars from the Victoria Viquettes. Kathy Keats at the line. She hits her first of two to tie this basketball game. Keats had nine points. Uh, against U of T. It was a relatively easy victory for Victoria. Kathy Shields, when I said it that way, looked at me and basically no coach ever wants to refer to a victory as easy. Sandra Carroll has checked into the game. That's Carroll at the top of the key. Baseline shot will fall for number nine, Andrea Hutchins. Now, interesting, Tom Kendall said to me this morning, uh, something different has to happen in the game. For instance, Andrea Hutchins has to step up and take an offensive role, and here she's put the uh, can two buckets already in the first half. Van Art. 
Jen Sutton puts it on the floor. Back out to Venard. Didn't want to take the shot. Nice ball movement. And Heather Bowie misses the shot. And here's Winnipeg with a one-point lead. Here's the first time we've seen Carroll. Baseline shot won't fall. Sutton with the rebound. Okay, now, Carroll missed that shot, but you see the dynamics of the game change. Right away, the ball's getting pushed off the floor. They are into the transition game that Kendall talked about, and that Kathy Shields doesn't want to let them get into. Shot will go for Kathy Keats, and I thought maybe she'd draw the foul. Well, she has finesse moves inside, and she's a tough player with experience. Good body balance in that move. Five points so far for Keats. Five of her team's 11. It's a one-point lead for the Vikettes. Here's Carroll. She's been in for 30 seconds, and she hits. Is it a three? Yes, it was. A three for Sandra Carroll. She's not bashful, that's for sure, and I think she likes this gymnasium. She's had just two spectacular games leading up to the championship today. 21 points and 26 points for Sandra Carroll, and if there's one reason why Winnipeg is here in the national championship game of Sandra Carroll. Ten on the shot clock. Van Art doesn't take many shots. Outside to Galloway, way out for three, and that's not the shot that they wanted. Sutton goes over everybody's head and travels. Tough move, but good offensive rebounding by Jen Sutton. See, they're so used to playing with each other that as soon as Callaway let that ball go, Sutton crashed the boards and got inside position. Okay, a couple of substitutions into the game is Sherry Bertwistle for Victoria. She'll be the biggest woman on the floor at 6'5". She's a second-year player. Raw offensive skills. And we've got possession going in favor of Victoria. There's no jump ball. The possession arrow goes back and forth, and this time it favored Victoria. Now, Burt Whistle is a factor. She's uh, second year into the Victoria program and improving month by month. Kathy Shields is very, very happy with her development, but she is six foot five, and that's something to contend with himself. Rejected by number 11, Karen Kubler, and here comes Winnipeg. They push it up the floor. Excellent defense by Kubler. Hutchins to Carroll. Ten on the shot clock. Inside, beautiful pass, but a tough position to take it. And she draws the foul. Well, again, they're, they're distributing the ball well to the wings, but the thing that's impressed me, Michael, with both of these teams early on is they're displaying great patience against the zone defense. This there pass is there, but it's a tough place to do anything with it, isn't it? Well, that was a tough pass, but I think Carroll had a, an instinct that the shot clock was going down on her, and she saw the player cutting back door. Inside it goes to Terry Martin. Turnaround jump shot, her favorite shot, and it works. She broke her finger two weeks ago. The doctors told her not to play, but you can see how she listened to her doctor. Yeah, but she's a seasoned veteran on this team, and if uh, Winnipeg had a glue, it would have to be Terry Martin. She's been through the wars. She knows what this is all about. Van Aert kicks it inside to Burton, so it won't fall for her, and just one shot this time down the floor for Victoria. Under 12 minutes remaining in the first half. And Winnipeg leads by four, another three, and it falls for outstanding Sandra Carroll. She's just terrific. She's lit up for this tournament. Last night, I watched her eyes, Michael. They never came off the basket throughout the whole second half. I don't think she knew there was a person in the stands or there were referees or teammates. She was just focused, and she's focused here today. The smallest player on the floor, five foot seven, right now is the biggest player on the floor. Two straight threes, and Winnipeg has a seven-point lead. Nicely answered by Christina Van Aert, her first two points of the game. Van Aert is a real great penetrator. She can slash with or without the ball, and when she has that ball and draws the defense, she creates problems for defensive teams. Double team at the baseline, back outside to Kubler. They rotate it to Sandra Carroll. Under 10, down to 7 on the shot clock. Carroll's going to put this up, you know, and it won't go. But they get a fresh 30 seconds on the rebound by Karen Kubler. And it will go this time. Three for four from three-point land. See, Carroll had, for her, the right kind of shot, but the key was the offensive rebound. So here's Winnipeg working in practice for three weeks, emphasizing offensive rebounds, have two big ones already in the first half that have put five points on the board. Three-quarter court pressure here, and they get the turnover. Winnipeg leads it by eight, and yes, no surprise at all, 
Victoria will take a timeout. 10 25 to play in the first half, and the Lady Westman lead by eight. With sweeping lines that soothe the senses, do airbags that make the morning sense, and innovations like using the sun to cool the interior. What else could we have called this car? The new 929 Serenity from Mazda. Welcome back and look at the Winnipeg bench and a great look at Sandra Carroll. Three for four from three-point territory, nine points for Carroll. And 47 points before the start of today's game in the tournament. One of the leading scorers in the tournament has an opportunity here today as she keeps playing well to be the leading scorer in this national championship. Which might be a record considering the fact that she's not a starter. Winnipeg gets a relatively open shot, won't fall, and the ball saved. A fresh 30. Oh, nice feed inside by Carroll, and they keep it alive again. All kinds of offensive rebounding for Winnipeg. Well, offensive rebounding, if a team goes for the boards hard against the zone, it sometimes proves to be one of the weaknesses in a zone defense. Winnipeg is really exploiting the gaps in that zone off the weak side by getting to the glass this afternoon. Okay, she's hit three for four from three. What does Kathy Shields do? Well, she wants to try to get some help when she penetrates, but what's happening is Winnipeg is penetrating the gaps in the zone and drawing the defensive players below the foul line. And Sandra Carroll's outside just waiting for the return pass. So she's scoring off the pass, not the dribble. A oh, nice feed by Jen Sutton to uh, Suzanne Tomio, who's in the game for the first time, but it won't roll. And it's an eight-point Winnipeg lead. So as you watch them attack this zone, one of the things they do well is they move in the gaps of the zone without the ball from the post positions and they drive the gaps right there. Sandra Carroll out of the game, rebound, brought down cleanly, won't go, second chance and a third chance, and all kinds of offensive work here by Winnipeg. It'll go Victoria's way, but if you're Coach Tom Kendall, that's gotta be encouraging. Oh, it is, that, that's a scrappy team on the boards. I mean, you're getting three shots every time down. Sooner or later, that's gonna pay big dividends for you. And Victoria all set for a substitution here to get Burt Whistle in the game. They need her six foot five. Jen Sutton draws the foul. And it will go. Michelle Chambers, number six. Now, that's excellent for young players who are watching the ball game this afternoon. You don't stop on the whistle. You continue your play. You drive to the basket. And you've got to develop that upper body strength. See, Jen Sutton's a fifth-year player. You've got to have the upper body strength to go through the contact and complete the play. Now, instead of a two-point play, or instead of getting pushed off balance and no basket, she's got an opportunity for three big ones. And Sherry Burt was the number 13, checks in. And you know why she's there. Uh, Kathy Shields obviously real concerned about the offensive rebounding of Winnipeg Lady Weston. Sutton converts the three. She now has five on the day. And you know, she shot 80% from the foul line during the season, so you don't want to foul her too often. Now, Victoria extended their defense for the first time in the ballgame. They've come up 2 2 1 full court and then drop back into uh, it looks like a 3 2 zone, and that's a change for them. So they're out of the 2 3 zone now. Kathy Shields out of that timeout made a change of defense. And a little pressure defense works well there. Kathy Keats forces the turnover, although that defense maybe isn't as appropriate now since Sandra Carroll's on the bench. Here's Jen Sutton. She'll take it right to the hoop. Dishes off to Burt Whistle, who throws it up errantly, and here comes Winnipeg. They'll push it up the floor. Hutchins stops, won't fall, and Keats pulls it down. She has been very effective. Captain Keats with six points and four rebounds. Here's Keats' baseline, and it rolls off the rim, pulled down by Andrea Hutchins. Still one shot for Victoria. That's right, one shot each time down the court. And that's what happened last night in one of the semifinal games. Toronto against Victoria could only get one shot, and it just destroyed them in the second half. You've got to get some extra shots off that glass. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Five-point Winnipeg, Lady Westman lead. Although a little of the spark has gone out with Carroll out of the lineup, and Jen Sutton, nice job fighting off two Winnipeg players to bring it down. If you're Kendall, do you put Carroll back in? 
No, I don't think Tom likes to put all his eggs in one basket, but he does cause problems to the opposition. This time it falls for Pam Flick. Because you can go from each side when Carroll's on the bench, and it keeps the other players involved. So being able to give her a rest every four or five minutes works very well because everybody gets to touch the rock. Inside of Burt Whistle. Back outside of Van Aert, three-point attempt won't go. Pam Flick pulls it down, and here Winnipeg pushes it up quickly. Flick stops, dishes it off, well read by Van Aert, nicely defense. Good defense, uh, a good move by, uh, by Pam Flick, but you never make the pass till you draw the defensive player to you. As soon as that defensive player drops off, then you've got to make the perimeter pass, because they're pretty cool to see it. Each gets it down low. It goes to Sutton, who has really terrific touch around the rim. Doesn't seem to need to look at the rim or face the basket. She just gets it down. Yeah, he's got the physical maturity to bang heads inside. And he's she's got backup help coming off the bench with those young players who are 6'3", 6'5". A big two by the Victoria Vikings. Cuts the lead to five. national championship he's won the GPAC conference seven times he's been to the nationals nine times he's been in the final four three times and this is his second appearance in the championship game his first and only was in 84 when he lost by seven to bishops his Winnipeg Lady Westman lead by five and he's sent in his star player Sandra Carroll she's number four and that's Carroll with the ball nine points she's hit three for four from three-point land and this time they rotate the ball well down inside but look at him hit the floor tell me it's not a final Michael and Carroll for three won't go easy rebound and a fortunate play there but you know Winnipeg's missed at least five or six outstanding opportunities for the easy two. Now, inside, their position has been great, but I wonder if fatigue is playing into this, this tournament now. We're in the third game in three days. The inside players are missing easy buckets inside. It may be nerves, but it could be fatigue. They've had two tough games in the last two nights. Reach in by number 13. Lorowitz, uh, Waschuk, and the foul. That's five team fouls on the Winnipeg Lady Westman. On your eight, you go into the boats. Victoria has two, so foul situation not a factor with them. We're under six minutes remaining in the first half. Here's Keats. Sutton. Baseline shot by Audrey Dennison. Won't go. Pulled down nicely, and she draws the foul. Tara Galloway. Now, Tara Galloway finds a way to get herself in the ballgame. She's a court leader. She's a penetrator. She's a slasher. She loves to be in transition, and she's a good outside shooter. And here she is at 5'7", 5'8", rebounding on the offside and starting her offensive flow with being an off-the-ball situation. She hits the first of two, which cuts the lead to four with 5.45 to play in the first half. Sarah Galloway's a tough player, tough-minded player. She had great leadership skills in the game last night. Hutchings to Sandra Carroll. Carroll through the double team and then feeds it inside. But look at Jen Sutton go up high and slap the ball away. Now, again, Victoria extending the defense and Winnipeg penetrating right to the basket. That's what you've got to do when you see pressure, Michael. You have to attack the pressure. If you back up against it, the defense is more effective. Most impressed with the play of Jen Sutton at both ends of the court. Experience, experience, experience. You can't buy it, and uh, you've just got to train it, and you've got to wait for it to develop. And, and she is an experienced player, and she's had a tremendous opportunity. She's seasoned on the provincial teams in British Columbia. She's played in the national tournament teams, and uh, she averaged 17 points a game, and is a solid rebounder. 
Now, that was outstanding when you see Carroll draw the defensive player. She drew, drew Bowie right up to her and made the play. That's how a playmaker makes a play. You've got to account for the defense. Bring the defense to you, then dish the ball. Having said that, Sutton was still able to move in and uh, make the appropriate defense. Big month of CIA youth coming up, coming up, uh, well, not later this month, later today at 8 o'clock Eastern time from the Duckworth Center in Winnipeg. It's the CIAU men's volleyball final. Laval will take on the Calgary Dinosaurs, historically a powerhouse. They were the number one seeds this year, and they'll look to win the national championship tonight. Hope you can join us on TSN at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Right now, it's the women's national basketball final. Oh, playing off the ball very nicely, Tara Galloway, and Galloway forces the turnover. Victoria seems to be settling down after a slow start. Sutton. Keats. Ten on the shot clock. Heather Bowie all the way across for Dennison, and it falls for Dennison. You get the feeling Victoria's more in their game now? Uh, well, I think they are, and a good substitution. Dennison is a terrific shooter from the outside and a good court leader, and she's done a good job coming in off the bench and, of course, hit an outside shot on his own. And so much of it seems to stem from the leadership of Jen Sutton, who, when her team was down by eight, really helped out, and they can now take the lead. Keats inside, won't go. Keats fights for her own rebound, puts it up again, and a third time, and this time it goes. I mean, that's true grit when you bang that glass three times in a row yourself and get the offensive boards. Carroll throws it up, but a little bit too high for Terry Martin. And boy, this game has had all kinds of flow to it. Winnipeg jumped out quickly, then Victoria came back. Then the Lady Westman opened up an eight-point lead, and now it's the Vikettes by one. Well, it, it's, it's fast-moving, but it's also a chess game. You've got two great coaches and great programs here, and they're working against each other's defenses. The timeouts have been very productive for both teams. Dennison hit her last. This one won't go. And here comes Carroll. This is where she's so dangerous. Carroll for first two of the game to follow 3-3. Three, three. So she's got 11 as we approach four minutes. Yeah, she was great on that transition. She put the player right on the back of her shoulders, protected the basketball, and took it right to the goal. Dennison missed her last. Let's see if she wants to take that. She seemed to hesitate for a second, but then she guns it through. But yeah. she knows what she's in there for. Now here, Michael, again, Victoria extending the defense full court. We didn't expect to see this much uh, extended pressure early in the game from Victoria, but Kathy Shields wants to, I think, pick the tempo up. She doesn't like to keep the score close. She'd like to open this game up if she could by halftime. Of course, Tom Kendall's trying to do the same thing. All rejected again by Sutton. At this time, Terry Mark gets in the ball and will go for a three-pointer. So. Terry Martin's a tough, uh, a tough player inside and an experienced player, but Jen Sutton, uh, she made a great right here. Doesn't reach, holds her spot, and doesn't lean into the player. That's terrific defense on the inside. Great fundamentals. That time she drew the foul for number eight, Audrey Dennison. 322 to play. It's a one-point Winnipeg lead, and they'll go to the line, but they won't do it until we return. This is the national championship live from Charlottetown, UPEI. There's a lot of focus right now on doing away with two scholarships in basketball. Almost 600 kids are not going to, in the next four years, have an opportunity to play basketball. I simply look around for another way. It's easy. We just simply charge the news media people for attending games. Available at Foot Locker. Welcome back to the National Championship. I'm Michael Landsberg along with Brian Heaney, the University of Winnipeg Lady Westman against that woman's Victoria Viquettes. That's Kathy Shields, and all she has done is won five national championships, but she hasn't won one since 1987, so she's about due. Oh, I think she's hungry. She's, uh, she's primed for this one and very, very pleased to be back here. I'm not so sure she fully expected to be at the beginning of the season, but the team kept developing and, and building throughout the season. And she thinks it's one of the best teams that she's had at there. Terry Martin hits her fifth point of the game, and it's, it's a two-point Winnipeg lead. Pressure now by Sandra Carroll. Double team.
Galloway, did she walk? Yes, she did. Turnover by Victoria, and Galloway didn't like the call. Always a tough call, and always a tough move. When you shuffle your feet on that move on the perimeter, you sometimes get nailed. Sometimes they give it to you, that time they didn't, and Victoria now has a chance to extend its lead to four. Under three minutes to play in the first half. Or maybe extend their lead to five, that's what Carroll's got in mind. She had a notion drive through, and Victoria reacted pretty well to it. Very much so. They held their ground inside. The key is not the foul. Nice drive by number 11, Suzanne Tomio. Her first two of the game, and we're caught at 28. And in the commercial, you said, where's the first half gone? It really has been terrific. Basketball in Winnipeg gets the easy two. Jody Rock with her first two. You've got to be impressed with Winnipeg. As soon as they see that pressure and it comes to them, they're either driving right through the middle on it or they're throwing over the top of it. Uh, they have one thing in mind. They want to get to the basket as quickly as they can. Dennison. Bowie gets it all the way across to Galloway. Three-point attempt will fall for number eight, right at the buzzer by Dennison. And Dennison has been a very important outside shooter off the bench. Come, come right off the bench and hit three shots. And, you know, one of the things that Victoria has been doing is throwing over the top of the Winnipeg defense, moving that defense from side to side, and trying to get the ball inside as a result of that. But Winnipeg's been collapsing on the big forwards down low, so consequently the shot has come up at the top of the key, and Vic has hit a couple of those important shots. Okay, you know how we've been playing it uh, with that post off set? You guys, you got to come to the ball, ball side, okay? And time it so she's looking for it, but Okay, wings, you got to look for the high post. You understand? Now, on our whip, on our, on our uh, dress, all right? Back it up a little, okay? We are not getting beat at the back. Well, there you go. Kathy Shields defensively doesn't want to get beat deep, so she's telling the back line of the press, back it up, make sure the ball doesn't get over your head. On offense, Uvic now should be looking to get inside. We're seeing a lot of perimeter shots, but they haven't established that, that terrorized inside post game. They've got to do it. Sandra Carroll stops, made the right choice, and I believe goes over the top. No, it'll be on number 14, Terry Martin. Seventh team foul on Winnipeg. Next one, Victoria would go to the bonus with 1.53 to play in the first half. Uh, in, inside, if you're at home and you're watching the music play here, it's interesting to see how many times the ball will go through the high post or on the area of the floor where the green paint is. Against zone defenses, you've got to go high or low first, and that creates your perimeter game. So they really try to work the ball through that high post area. Long pass, and it doesn't pay off. Here comes Winnipeg off the turnover. Lots of contact here. Winnipeg coach Tom Kendall giving it to the referee who's right in front of him. Now, I'll tell you, you're seeing Winnipeg take a little bit more time with the basketball since Victoria has changed to the 3-2 alignment on the defense. The two on the shot clock. Sorry, there's Carroll, and it doesn't go, but Winnipeg keeps it alive. Jody Rock fought hard for that. They're having to be more patient, but it's offensive boards that have kept them in the game on offense in terms of getting shots. Good defense here by Victoria, denying any kind of decent shot. Carroll, you know, is going to want to take it, and the pick is a little bit too aggressive. Terry Martin gets nailed, and she uh, did a little bit of the nailing just before that. Now, Kathy Shields thought that Winnipeg was susceptible. Right here, you see Martin move in and put both forearms up and thrust out. And, and she got called for that foul. Now, that's two fouls that Martin has got off the play. So now she loses the opportunity to play tough defense uh, herself. She's so the, screening for the for foul Carol. on that play, Brian, wasn't the fact that she, her position was how aggressive she was with her arms? That's right. She moved the arms out and actually pushed the player off. Good call. Carroll reaches in, though, gets the turnover, and here comes Carroll. She draws the foul and then does a great job to get the ball up and almost got the roll. See, a focused player, one thing on her mind, penetrate, penetrate, penetrate. One of the subtleties that she did very well on that drive was she pushed the ball ahead of her in transition. A lot of players keep the ball close to them, or they overrun the ball. That's how the defense gets their hands on it. As soon as Sandra Carroll was challenged, she pushed the ball ahead of her, and that's what you want to do in transition play. One of the things she also did was get rid of the ball and therefore draw the two-shot foul. That's that right. was kind of in the borderline area. That's right. 
for players uh, who, who are developing still, when you anticipate there's going to be contact, make that move to the basket. You'll pick up the extra foul shot. So you can go to the line and nail them both as she did for a one-point Lady Westman lead. 30-second clock is off. We're under 30. 20 to go in the first half. Victoria playing for the last shot, and Carroll reaches in and draws her first foul of the game. And that will be the eighth foul for Winnipeg, so Galloway will go to the line, one and one. Anxiety, uh, nervousness, competitiveness, all come into play in a game of this magnitude. But one of the things you don't want to see is fouls committed 23 feet from the basket. So Sandra Carroll's got to calm down a little bit defensively, play with good positioning with her feet, cut the penetration off if she can, but keep her hands to herself and stay out of foul trouble. And you don't want to foul Tara Galloway in her fourth year, a fine shooter and a fine shooter from the line, and she makes Winnipeg pay. 15 seconds to go, and it's the Vikettes by one. Good pressure, but nicely broken, and Martin takes it to the hoop. Won't go. Look at Sutton's force underneath. Let's see if Victoria can get a shot. Five seconds. Sutton just over midcourt, gets it down low to Galloway, who puts it up and draws the foul. No! An offensive foul. They call a charge on Galloway with one second to play. And a great play by Karen Kubler. I mean, that was going to be a basket or a foul. Kubler established position. And look again, didn't reach. Both of these teams are so well coached that the fundamentals are just blaring out at you here in the championship. One second, and not even that. And just as the ball is inbounded, it's over the first half. A terrific first half. The Winnipeg Lady Westman opened up a nice lead, and Victoria fought back. And as a result, it's a one-point lead for the Victoria Vikettes. And as you said in the commercial, Where'd the first half go? That's right. It just flew by and a game of contrast, just as we thought it would be. Victoria, to this point in time, offensively is going around the perimeter and over the top. Winnipeg is going through the defense and under the bottom. They're, they're penetrating much better uh, than, than Captain Shields would like, but the game close as everyone expected. And as a result, it's a one-point Victoria Vikettes lead. One half is done, at least one half to go. We'll return to Charlottetown in just a few moments. This is me, Vicky. To the Big Apple to face the front leading Knicks. The Hornets on the next Saturday, 10 Eastern. NBA excitement on TSN. You asked for it. Now you've got it. More of a good thing. Sports Desk on TSN. Now, seven times daily. It's a great spot, and all year long, everybody's been pointing to Charlottetown UPEI as the home of the national championship for the women. And I don't know all year long whether people pointed to this final. One half is done, the Victoria Vikettes by one over the Winnipeg Lady Westman. There's no question that in CIAU basketball, the name that most associate with coaching is Shields of the Ken and Kathy variety. They have been outstanding over the years, and David Pratt had an opportunity to spend some time with them recently. This is the campus of the University of Victoria. For the last 14 years, it has been home to Kathy Shields. During that time, Shields has enjoyed the highest winning percentage of any women's coach in Canadian college basketball. Also during that time, she has taken the Vikes to five national championships. So what's the secret? Good athletes, <laughs> good players. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not really kidding when I say that. I mean, we've, I think we've been successful at recruiting good student athletes here. And, um, uh, you know, I think just the focus has always been to um, provide an environment where they could be uh, successful and where we could push them to their potential. And uh, I feel that we've done a pretty good job at doing that. Kathy's husband is Ken Shields, who coached the men's team at UVic before taking over the national team. With the schedules and travel that go with both jobs, it has created a rather unique relationship. Our lives are, are pretty uh, uh, bizarre in terms of, of uh, a normal family relationship. I mean, we've spent four days together the past two summers, and uh, in the winters, weekends, uh, uh, we rarely see each other. So uh, it's different than the normal people would. Uh, you, you wouldn't find it. You wouldn't find this relationship normally. Of course, we're very interested in each other's. Um, uh, careers, but um, you know we we've learned to balance it well, and I think that's been one of the um, keys to uh, probably staying married, <laughs> and also um, you know being able to be successful over the long term. Although the pressure to maintain both a personal and professional life can often result in a burnout on the job, 
That has not been the case for Kathy Shields. A career coach such as myself, you learn to pace yourself a little. Um, you know, you, you uh, make sure you don't take the job home with you too much, although it's difficult in my case. But um, I love the game, and the game's been my life um, as a player and now as a coach, and, and it hasn't been a problem for me. The Vikes are once again a favorite to win another national championship, which for Kathy Shields is sort of a family tradition. David Pratt, TSN, Victoria. speak with her before the game and you know I get the feeling like there was a, a renewed fire a renewed intensity in her eyes you know when you win five national championships over a short period of time it's possible to some extent to to lose some of that intensity but it's back because she hasn't won a national title since 1987 and I think she used many of her outstanding coaching abilities in that first half to react to what was a terrific start for the Winnipeg Lady Westman yes this is a very well coached game today and there's good reason why these two teams are here and perhaps the best reasons of all are the two coaches that have done it, Tom Kendall and Kathy Shields. The second half from Charlottetown is coming up, and when we return, uh, we'll meet a very influential man. For the game, when the big win. Time in the national championship game between the Victoria Vikettes and the Winnipeg Lady Westman. The lead went back and forth eight or nine times. When it was done, at least the first half, it was the Vikettes by one. And it's a pleasure to welcome here the coach of our women's Olympic team, Wayne Hussey, who's also here. Imagine doing a little scouting, but let's talk about the play in a moment. First of all, your situation. You're now in final approach after a lot of years of work. You're now approaching uh, Olympic qualifying. Well, that's definite, Michael. Uh, since the last qualification tournament, the last four years have been spent getting ready for this next Olympics. And uh, we've just come off a successful eight, nine-week training camp. And now we've given the players three weeks off. The end of March, we get the whole team together, and it's the final steps towards the Olympic qualifying tournament at the end of May in Spain. Well, the guy who held the job in 1976, who coached the team, who was one of the forerunners at your position, is Brian Haney, right? Well, you know, Wayne, one of the things I'm impressed with in this tournament, and the tournament and its players from the CIU feature team, is the fundamental play of a lot of the outstanding players. That has to be attributed to the coaching development in the country. Tell me about it. Well, I think the top programs in the country do produce really good players. I think the problem that a lot of the players get into when they reach the international level is decision making. And that takes years and years of experience. So the three, four, five years they spent at the CIU does get them ready physically, but the mental decision making process takes usually another three or four years once they're out of the CIU. Can you win? I think we can. There's only one team out of the 16 teams that we'll face that we haven't been able to beat. That's the Soviets. They're in a little bit of a disarray now. And, and we know it's going to be a difficult situation, but we really feel we have a good, honest shot at it. Well, good luck to you. Thanks, Brian. Wayne, I think it's important for us to put in perspective when you say, can you win? Uh, when is the tournament and what's the situation? Who do you have to beat out to qualify? How many spots are available? Well, the tournament's at the end of May. There'll be 16 teams there, 16 of the top teams in the world fighting for four spots. There's four spots available. Uh, in our pool, we have the Soviets, we have Bulgaria, we have Italy, and we have the two top Asian teams. On the other side, Hungary's very tough, Brazil, you have um, another Asian team. So, I mean, there's 10 teams, 10 legitimate teams for those four spots. And like I said earlier, we've beaten them all, but they've also beaten us. So we're in, definitely in the hunt. Wayne, good luck. I know I speak for uh, all Canadians who, who follow the team at all. Uh, good luck, and I think many of us feel that you got a great shot. Thanks. Wayne Hussey is the coach of the national women's team. He's preparing his team for the Olympics, but before they get to the Olympics, they have to qualify. That won't be easy, but Wayne Hussey says they got a pretty good shot. Stay with us. When we return, it's the second half of the national championship game. It's the Vikettes by one over the Lady Westman. Here's a look at the first team, all Canadians, and note uh, along the right side, there's no Winnipeg or Victoria players. Sue Stewart had a terrific year for Laurentian, Sandra Hamilton, Kara Palmer, Andrea Laddie and Denise Scott uh, from across the country. And uh, of note here, of course, Sandra Carroll from Winnipeg, second team All-Canadian, and I can almost guarantee the only one to make this list of 10 who was not a starter. As for the awards this year, Kathy Shields was the coach of the year for the fine job she did with a Victoria team that many didn't rate that high before the season. Sue Stewart, player of the year. Boy, is she ever exciting to watch and uh, helped her team get to the national semifinal. The rookie of the year is Teresa McKish of St. Francis Xavier. No question, our Rookie of the Year on this telecast so far is Brian Heaney. It's been fun, hasn't it? Well, it's been great. I looked up at the clock. I couldn't believe there were only three minutes left in the first half. The game has just flown by.
Okay, let's take a look at first half highlights. And uh, one of the players that impressed us and perhaps surprised us was Keats for Victoria. She was most impressive, particularly when they needed her. Well, Kathy Keats is a, is a great player. She has the finesse inside moves. She has the outside shot. Here you see her moving without the ball going to the basket. And it's that experience level. She's seasoned provincially. She's seasoned junior nationally. And she'll move back to the basketball without it bang the boards offensively, doing the little things that the leaders do. She gave them points exactly when they needed them. Okay, Sandra Carroll hit three threes, but here's her two. Well, Sandra Carroll, again, pushing the ball out in front of her, just a dynamic floor player, comes right in off the bench, focused on the basket, on the defense, creating turnovers, generating the excitement that leads to Lady Westman basketball. The big excitement from Jen Sutton were her two blocks in the first half. Here's one of them. Well, a tower of strength inside, holding her position. A very smart player. Again, moving to the basketball, reaching up but not reaching in. And then banging the boards and holding balance. A good player with great fundamental skills. You know, normally it's lip service. Two guys stand here with jackets and ties on before the game and say, boy, it looks like a great game. Too close to call almost. But uh, when we said that with regards to this one, I think it was fairly accurate, wasn't it? I think it was, and I think people understood that. Uh, both teams, uh, uh, tremendous seasons behind them, uh, a ton of wins, almost 30 for both clubs and over 30 for Victoria, and nobody was going to come here today not ready to play, and they have been ready to play. So sometimes you can trust the two guys wearing the suits on TV. Stay with us. You can trust us. The second half's going to be outstanding, and we'll see it when we return to UPEI. It's the Vikettes by one. fascination always existed. The human body, without doubt, is the greatest of inventions. Flawless in design, capable of astonishing feats. Amazingly, the harder the body is worked, the stronger, more beautiful it becomes. To unlock your body's potential, we proudly offer Soloflex. 32 old-fashioned iron-pumping exercises, each correct in form and balance. All on a machine that fits in the corner of your home. Soloflex. Simple and efficient, like the body itself. Which may explain why it looks less like a machine and more like a work of art. For a free brochure, call anytime. talked about the offensive rebounding of the Winnipeg Lady Westman, and it's certainly reflected in this. Look at the shooting. The Westman only shooting 38%, yet they only trail it by one, and the reason is they were able to bang the boards. Look at free throws. No one has missed a free throw today, and uh, I've seldom seen a national championship won by any team in college basketball uh, if you don't shoot free throws very well. As for rebounding, the Westman, as expected, have an edge there. Turnovers about even, and steals exactly even. Well, that's right. I think uh, Winnipeg would like to get to the foul line uh, a little more often. But, you know, again, Victoria letting them bring the game to them inside and uh, not overextending the defense creates a situation where it's tough to get on that foul line. Here we go. The second half, the Winnipeg Lady Westman in white moving right to left on your screen against the Victoria Vikettes. It's the Vikettes by one point. I'm not sure exactly what was intended there. It was uh, Michelle Chambers who worked down low. Now, Chambers was very quiet in that first half. Not one of her better first half. Well, you know, she was steady. and uh, she, she she didn't stand out, but she's steady. And, and Tom Kendall, with some of the explosive players on this, on this team, they need that steady play on the inside. Terry Martin with another foul, I believe her third, and that might get Tom Kendall up and look for a substitution. Martin, in her fifth year, desperately wants to go out as a national champion, and I think uh, perhaps reflecting a little over-aggressiveness in her play. Yeah. You can feel the tension of the first half is now gone, and uh, there's a little more strategy and X and O going on here, but you'll see the pace pick up throughout this second half. Never heard X and O used as a verb before. <laughs> Vikettes lead it by one after trailing by as many as eight in that first half. Galloway for three, won't go. Little push in the back. Winnipeg got away with it. Here comes Pam Flick. Inside it goes. Good hands, able to bring it down. Jody Rock. And Jody Rock is a great player. Uh, uh, Tom Kendall thinks she's one of the best athletes that he has ever coached, and thinks that she has a great career ahead of her. Well, here's Jen Sutton with the ball. She's had a great career in her fourth year, leading rebounder with seven in the first half for Victoria. High post it goes, and Sutton draws the foul. 
she moved in on the block. You got to hold your position. Veteran player with all kinds of size. And We're seeing a timeout here of Victoria. Which is an interesting time. You only get two and a half, and to take one with 1847 to play is perhaps a bit surprising. That's right, it is surprising. But uh, I'm sure Kathy Shields saw something that she felt she had to address right away early in the second half. See, both coaches right here, Michael, are battling the tempo. Okay. 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 I'm sorry, the Okay. Um, we're going to give it one more shot, and if you guys, if we can pack in on the low post, all right, then we'll stay in three, otherwise we're going man. But right now, when the ball's there, you guys are sitting out here, and the ball's just going right in there. And we've got the weak side, weak side um, person coming in here. Okay? Here we go, guys. Now, basically, what Kathy Shields wants is more activity from the perimeter players in the zone. We talked early in the first half about the defenses being extended sideline to sideline. She's got to get some help down in the posts. Winnipeg is able to isolate the defensive player down there. Kathy Shields can't have that. To hear her say, we're going man, means they're going to go out match up man to man. That's very uncharacteristic of this team, and it shows you the importance of this game. You never pull Victoria out of the zone. There's Keats, leading score, pretty baseline move, but she took the extra step, and there's uh, the play of Michelle Chambers, who cut off the baseline nicely. But she fought for the turf, you know? You, you, you gave her eight feet, she wanted six feet, and that's the mark of a good player inside. Sandra Carroll checks back in. And if they go man to man, it'll be interesting to see who they have on Carroll. Chambers shot will go, but the rebound followed up by Jody Rock, and Chambers is ice cold. I don't think she's got a point. But Jody Rock on the all rookie team for the CIAU, strutting her stuff early in the second half there on the inside play. Very important player off the bench of Tom Kendall. Sutton gets it down low where it's rescued by Heather Bowie. Ten on the shot clock, inside to Keats. Back to Sutton, five on the clock, and here's Sutton, so strong, clicks for her own rebound. And now Sutton fouls from behind. Now that's frustration right there. Excellent play by Jen Sutton. High post, penetrates through the zone to the basket, misses the shot, gets her rebound, misses the second, and then reaches for a foul. And she knew it too. You could tell her she was a little bit disgusted with herself. She accepted it. Bert Whistle will check in. She's the six foot five center for Victoria. Winnipeg being very, very selective here. Victoria in a 3 2 zone, and they've got Kathy Keats at the top of the key. She brings five size out there. Three point attempt won't go, and Keats pulls it down. Nice job going up higher than Michelle Chambers, who had position. Keats is a good athlete. She's got good legs, good springs. Here's Galloway drives and draws the foul from number eight, Jody Rock. Now that's something that I think Kathy Shields has not seen enough of, and that is the penetration on the dribble through the Winnipeg defense. Now, if anybody can start it, Galloway can. Here she comes right through the middle. She accepts the, the uh, contact and still is able to get away a credible shot. She should be on the line for two. Three-point Winnipeg Lady Westman lead. Now Galloway's a good shooter. She's uh, shot 74% uh, for the season. Uh, she misses the first one here on the, on the front end of that. But uh, this morning in shooting practice, she was really drilling the ball, Michael, from 20 feet, doing a great job. She just hasn't had that shot during the ball game yet. First foul shot that we've seen miss today. Under 17 minutes to play in regulation. They play for the national championship by Michael Ansford, along with former national coach, former NBA player, Brian Heaney. Oh, nothing but ribbon. Sandra Carroll way up into the rafters. Well, you know, she adjusted her shot with us. Uh, uh, Sherry Brentwistle came right at her, 6'5 against 5'8, and uh, just kept the concentration. Arc will do it every time. If you stay within yourself, put good arc on the basketball, even the big players can't get there. Four point lead for Sandra Carroll's Winnipeg Lady Western. She now has 13 on the day. And her foot was on the baseline, so the Lady Westman turn it over again, and here they come. We're going to push the ball up the floor and keep the tempo up. 
that's what Tom Kendall wants. He feels if they run, if they get into each other's bench, it's an asset to his team. Rolling hook shot won't go, and good position there by number 11, Suzanne Tomio. Tomio's played a good complimentary role in this game. She's made some key rebounds and made a, uh, a real key basket in the first half. They go to the baseline for Denniston, and it went everything but in, but Bertless will pulls it down, won't go as well. A bigger Winnipeg lineup in right now. Excuse me, a bigger Victoria lineup, and they were able to pull down a couple of rebounds. Now, it shows the confidence Kathy Shields has in Bird Whistle uh, as a relatively inexperienced player, putting her in the front line. Sandra Carroll misses. She thought she had drawn the foul. Galloway, and there was Carroll. She didn't draw the foul. She committed the foul that time. And a pretty good job by Tara Galloway, who for the second time in the last minute has been very aggressive and tried to penetrate. Well, Victoria's tried to go outside on the perimeter uh, without uh, as much effectiveness as they'd like. They've tried to go inside and haven't been that effective. Now we're seeing with Galloway uh, the transition game starting. So they'll try. Both, both these teams can do so many things. Now if Vic can get in transition, they may have some success. It's a four-point lead when we return. Hasty Market invites you to play Triple Play Giveaway. You could scratch and win instantly a diamond ring from Walters Jewelers, valued at $1,000. Collect and win great prizes, like an Elna sewing machine or a Dirt Devil vacuum from Royal Appliance. Enter our grand prize sweepstakes draw with a proof of purchase from any sponsoring product. And you could win one of six trips for two to Virginia Beach, courtesy of U.S. Air. For outstanding selection and fast, friendly service, shop Hasty Market, much more than a convenience store. Those are the Winnipeg Lady Westman as they look for the first national championship ever for Coach Tom Kendall in his 13th year. They've got a great opportunity. They lead the Victoria Vikettes by four. These two teams have met twice this year. And a reminder, all kinds of curling coming up. This is Curling Month on TSN. The Labatt Breyer, the preview and the second draw tomorrow from Agridome in Regina at 2 o'clock Eastern time. We'll preview it for you, then we'll show it to you. All kinds of action all week long on TSN. Here's Galloway, who's been much more aggressive in the second half. Keats draws the double team, gets it inside. Beautiful job by Keats. Again, the penetration. That's the key to breaking the zone apart. You've got to, you've got to do what we call punch. You've got to get a dribble or two between two defensive players. Keats just perfected the move. And she got it inside of Tomio for the easy two, and it's now a two-point lead. Here's Carroll. Doesn't take the three, but lightning quick, she penetrates. And the ball will go to Victoria, so good defense. Carroll doesn't like it, and that's not the first time that she's complained. Well, Carroll hit the deck. She's looking for the call on that move. In general, I think it's been a well-refereed game. They've run a lot go. They have put their whistles away to a large extent. Very strong game. Good judgment on the part of both officials. They're letting the players play the game. Inside the Burton whistle, back outside. Good ball movement. They rotate it to Keats, and it goes down for Keats. And the veteran Kathy Keats in her fifth year is really helping her team have a shot at a national title. We're tied at 38. Now you look back on uh, Kathy Shields' timeout early in the second half. It's paid some dividends here. And that'll be on number six, Michelle Chambers, who... Did not have position to try to come over the top. Now, one of the things that Victoria likes to do, Michael, in their zone offense, is put the ball inside to the low post, but they like to go to the high post first. They go high, then low. And Winnipeg has done a good job giving the high post player a lot of trouble. Keith put the ball on the floor, but not before she'd taken a step, and she travels. And I'm not sure what the whistle was. At least the ball just got away from her. It just got away. Tom Kendall sees a 38-38 basketball game. 13-42 to play in regulation. All the way to Sandra Carroll. Nice feed down low. And Carroll, oh, she is lightning quick. Burt Whistle does a good job to pull it down. Big 6'5", Sherry Burt Whistle. Carol Steelers. She goes to the biggest player and tries to take it to her. 
Dennison blocked by Cameron. Let's see if Michelle Cameron can get involved in this game. She has really not been a factor. I'll tell you, Michael, bodies are flying all over this gym. Andrea Hutchins won't go. Burt has done a good job off the bench of Kathy Shields. Great job. She's really been a factor in the first uh, six or seven minutes of this half. Winnipeg, many, many fewer offensive rebounds. Just a handful in the second half, and the two-point attempt won't go. And here's Cameron's second rebound. Second straight. Carroll. Pam Flick gets it down low to number nine, Andrea Hutchins. Hutchins guarded by Galloway, and she draws the foul. Only the second team foul of the Victoria Vikettes. Been a well-played game defensively. The players have not been sloppy. And a reminder to stay tuned immediately following this national championship game for the TSN Turning Point. It's brought to you today by Sony. With brighter colors and sharper contrast, Sony Trinitron's exclusive one gun picture tube catches all the action. It's the king of the hill. Chip, and the question that's around the country today is who will be there? We know the two guys will be here. Well, that's right. You and I will be there looking forward to it because this season is really wide open. It's anybody's ball game, and uh, that tournament's going to be played with great anticipation. That's coming up two weeks from now, but right now it's the Women's National Championship, and it is a 38-38 basketball game with 12 and a half minutes to play in rough regulation. Keats gets the turnover, and the possession arrow will go in favor of the Victoria Vikettes. Chris Van Arts back in the ballgame now. We haven't seen her in the second half, and she's playing along with Dennison. What Victoria is trying to do now is exploit the defense down on the baseline. Inside again, Sutton gets it to Burt Whistle, and Burt Whistle has it stolen away. And Flick had the ball, but I believe had her foot on the line. Yeah, and Burt, Burt Whistle got her a forearm squad there, was looking for the call, was cut to handle and hold on to. Coming up to 12 minutes to play. Uh, Kathy Keats is asking the referee just to move the player back because that sideline's pretty crowded, so she wants three feet distance in order to, to maneuver. Here's Van Art. Uh, Keats from 12 feet, and it goes through very cleanly. Keats has been outstanding. In Victoria, they say she has a sweet jump shot. She's showing her form right here. Cameron won't go, Sutton keeps it alive, and the possession will go to Winnipeg. So, Michael, four players down on the loose ball, playing for the national championship. Enthusiasm, hard play, hard-nosed players. That's why they're here today. Absolutely. Well-coached, well-prepared, and neither team willing to bend an inch. No, Tom Kendall told me early in the year one of the turning points for his team was a confidence builder when they went down and they beat the University of Minnesota in the Big Ten at Minnesota. A week later, Minnesota lost to North Carolina State, the number nine ranked team in America, and he said his players really came alive then. Here's Dennison on the fast break. Will go. Sutton goes and pulls it down and draws the foul from Karen Cooper. Now, if you looked at the shot chart in the second half, you'd see Victoria starting to get shots closer to the basket, down on the baseline, accomplishing some of the things, no doubt, they tried to get done at halftime. No question, they've been much stronger inside, both offensively and defensively. And one of the reasons is Sherry Bertwistle. She's got the ball right now, number 13. Draws five players. Look at the zone shift, and they rotated it very nicely to Jen Sutton. Okay, that, was a, that was a set player, a set concept, because Sutton almost instinctively shot the ball. She knew she was wide open. Here's Carroll who takes it right to the hoop, slapped away, third block of the game by Sutton. And the veteran player rises up and gives a spark to the Vikings. Terrific athlete with great timing and smart enough with experience not to have the body contact. He nails it. 13 points, five rebounds for Kathy Keats. And look at the experienced player, fifth year Keats, outstanding. And Jenny Sutton, in her fifth year as well, has played both ends of the floor. Well, size and experience always pay big dividends. Tom Kendall's got to be concerned about that right now. It's Victoria by six when we return. This is Jay. 
Jay doesn't say much when he's enjoying his McCain Super Fries. And he doesn't seem to care that Super Fries are cholesterol-free and low in saturated fats. McCain Super Fries. Deep fried flavor and crispness from your oven. For the strong, silent type. Here we go. First of all, the Winnipeg Lady Westman, Carol. Rejected by Jen Sutton. And, uh, and doing the right things, but Tom Kendall just told his team in the timeout, doing them too early. He wants to get them fatigued before they take the ball to the goal. And all the way they go, Van Art. Watch Burt Whistle here attract five Lady Winnipeg Westmen. There they are. They're all around her, and she gets it back out to Keats. And Keats hits the basket, and it's now a six-point lead. That's right, Michael. And just her presence, as you said, attracted the defense, and it creates easier opportunities on the perimeter. And with the experience here of the Vikings, they can make those shots. They're very accurate. You know, this is the first time in the game that Victoria's had as much as a six-point lead, and the first time that the younger Winnipeg team has had to try to respond. Let's see it. Key time down the floor, and there's Sutton. Off the good work by Van Art and the turnover. Victoria leads it by six. Now, I told you the second half, you'd see the intensity pick up somewhere. It's right here at this moment. The intensity's way up. Jennison hits for two. She is a long-range bomber. One of, the, one of the characteristics she brought to the program was the deep-range jump shot. And now the focus shifts to Sandra Carroll. One for eight, and Winnipeg able to save it. Yes, they are. Still lots of time on the shot clock, and the block by Keats. Jen Sutton, nine points, eight rebounds, and three blocks. And this one of those borderline calls that I think was a good call. Well, I think the calls have been good enough during the game that one call's not going to make it or break it. But right here, her arms were folded in. She pushed off the hip. I think good reaction by the referee. You've got to take that foul. Janice Deacon and Gilles Briere are the officials for today. And that's the first time in a while that the Victoria Vikette bench has been sitting. They have been going crazy. Travel. Took those two early steps, and you can't do that. Andrea Hutchins. You can do it in the NBA, can't you? They well, never you can away with it more than you will here, that's for sure. You eh? can take nine in the NBA. <laughs> Vikettes have a chance to go up by ten. Ten minutes to play, and they look for a ten-point lead. Van Art inside of Burt Whistle, all the way out to Denison, who shoots from the hip, won't go. And it'll be on Michelle Cameron, I believe. And Sherry Burt Whistle took an elbow right to the cheek on that move. No one saw it. It was at the time the whistle was blown, but it hurt. Well, there goes Cameron out of the game. That's four personal fouls on, excuse me, Michelle Chambers. And she'll sit down. Now, versatility uh, is going to factor for both teams during the year. But and there's Van Art, quick first step, and she draws the foul from Sandra Carroll, and that's a good call. Now, that was a good call. And, uh, Sandra Carroll is just a little bit over anxious, but when you have that aggressiveness, when you have that winning spirit, you just can't put a rein on it. You're going to have that kind of contact when you're that kind of player. Carroll one for eight from the floor in the second half. Now, Victoria, right here you see that leg go out. She did everything she could to get there, and I think she caught bone on bone in the side of her knee there, and I'll tell you, Michael, that hurts. Grab for a stomach interest in the Van Arts at the line if she hits the first end, and if she can hit the second, they'll be up by 10 points, the largest lead by any team. A few times in this game that Victoria's had any lead at all, and they're up to 10, and we're under 10 minutes to play. Westman got to get it in the hoop. Uh, you got to watch Van Art on defense at the top of this zone. The whole pace of defense changed when she went to the point. Won't fall, kept alive, and not saved this time as her foot was on the line. Andrea Hutchins. The game's just turning. You know, if we look back at the turning point, it'll be around this 10-minute mark that Victoria goes on to win. That's right. And there's the travel. Van Art, yeah, she knew it. She took that extra step. See, the versatility of Victoria, we have uh, Heather Bowie at the wing now. She was playing inside most of the first half. They lob inside, and there's Jen Sutton with another block. Number four of the day, and look at the Vikettes bench. She's happy she's building her reputation as a shot blocker. She can go home with that under her arm. 
That was great body control, too, yeah, because she had actually gone by her and reached back with her arm. That's a great play. Yeah, a big smile to boot. That's right. The key is in shot blocking that a lot of young players don't understand is you block them with your legs, not with your hands. And she's developed the ability and the control to keep those hands extended vertically. You know, both of these coaches, Michael, have done such a tremendous job all year. And you look at the two teams that have come to the championship game. Tom Kendall, in his career, has 342 wins. And Kathy Shields has 377 wins. We're looking at these two benches with over 700 wins in CIAU competition over the last 12 and 13 years. Michelle Chambers having a tough day. Four fouls and only a... I believe two points to go with it. You're looking for her second. When you get the ball, you're looking to score. Now that's interesting. Here we are at the crunch time in the game. Nine minutes to go. Winnipeg's down ten. And Tom Kendall goes back to what he wants to do at the beginning of the game. Inside first then look for the player on the perimeter in the gap. Not outside first, then inside. You know what's interesting is that Sandra Carroll has been shut down so effectively in the second half. Not unlike uh, what the Vikettes have done really all season long. They have shown an ability to adapt at halftime, come out and then do a job on the other team's key player, which they have done. That's right. K uh, Kathy Shields has made some smart defensive substitutions. That, as I mentioned earlier, when Kathy Keats left the point, they lost the person six foot one out there. But Dan Art is a pick bull on defense and changed the whole complexion of the ball game at the 10 minute mark. Dan Art turns it over, and it's Michelle Chambers back in the game who was there to rescue it. Here comes Carroll. She's got to get hot again, and it won't fall. One for nine in the second half by Sandra Carroll. And she's got the, the guts to keep trying to shoot it down. Again, look at the defense being extended. Sideline to sideline. What was the call there? I didn't pick it up. Three-second call yeah. inside. An opportunity now. It's still a 10-point lead. The Winnipeg Lady Western, I don't think it's scored in five and a half minutes. Something like that. And this one won't go as well. They are ice cold. Well, they're ice cold. And the way to get back in a ball game, Michael, is not from the outside. Tom Kendall called it right in the timeout. you got to go inside first. Ben Art's done that twice now, and maybe you've got away with one before as well, that first step. Yeah, now one of the things Ben Art's doing is she's starting to aim the ball, steer the ball. And uh, you can't throw it like a dart. You've got to be able to shoot naturally, concentrate on the target. But in a game like this, where every shot starts to become important, you sometimes, as a shooter, begin to aim the ball. It's the worst thing you can do. You remember how to shoot well, and she's a great shooter. She's one for ten, at least. Sandra Carroll is in the second half, and uh, it certainly makes some sense when you look at the scoreboard. It's the Vikettes by ten with 8-14 to play in regulation. There's Sandra Carroll, three for four from three-point land in the first half, one for ten from anywhere in the second half. Well, it's real tough for a perimeter player to stay hot through an entire tournament. Uh, she's been hot right up until half time. And the best thing she can do now is blend in for a few minutes with everybody else and let the offense work inside. Winnipeg, four for 18 in the second half. And of course, we haven't seen many offensive boards from them either. Victoria closed the offensive lanes down and they're controlling the defensive backboard. Sherry Bertwistle, not in the game right now, but her six foot five inch frame certainly made a difference in Jen Sutton travel. 8.07 to play. You look for more pressure for the Winnipeg Lady Western? Well, I think they have to bring pressure right now. Uh, last night, Toronto brought pressure in their ball game, but too late. They brought it at five-minute mark. There's eight minutes left. You're down ten. I think you got to go full court. Chambers puts it on the floor, and it does roll down. The first points that they've scored in six minutes. Yeah. Solid fourth year player. Again, good fundamentals inside. Well, this is what you called for, four-court pressure. And a buzzer goes off, and no one seems to have any idea why. Well, that sometimes happens. Actually, Victoria wanted a substitution. Now, should they have gotten the substitution? Yeah, they got the, the substitution there. Yeah. So that's why the buzzer went off. Actually, the officials and the support people here at this tournament have been terrific, Michael. They've done just a great job. Table officials, facility officials. Everyone on the tournament committee has to be commended. 
Beautiful steal by Flick. Pam Flick. And she'll look for the basket and she gets it. Six point lead. Yes, you wanted the fourth floor pressure. And Flick executed it beautifully. Got to come. Here it is. And did Keith step on the line or was it five seconds? Couldn't have been five seconds. Too much time. Too much time. Oh, there's no way that was five seconds. She, she virtually just got the ball in her hands. I think the referee's interpretation was Victoria's players had control of it and laid it down. Keats didn't pick it up in time. No one's fault, just one of those circumstances. Can you feel it shifting? Let's see if Carol guns it. Six-point lead. Inside the team chamber. Turn around. Hook shot. Good. Right there. Kendall step what he wants now. Inside play. Inside, inside. They're going to chambers and then extended defense. So right here, you're seeing the contrast that we talked about at the half. We heard that buzzer before the errant one. Maybe it woke up to Shell Chambers. Two straight baskets for Chambers, and it's back to a four-point lead for Victoria Vikes. Well, the difference for Chambers is involvement. You can't, you can't do it unless you get your hands on the ball. They're feeding the ball inside now, and she's capable. Galloway for three. She's the toughest kid. We watched her last night. She wants the ball, Michael, in the crunch time. You've got to be very careful about her, and Winnipeg has got to extend the defense, or she'll light it up. Bad pass, bad pass intended for Jody Ross. It's a seven point Victoria lead with 6.14 to play in regulation. Jen Sutton, nice pass inside, a bullet pass, rebound, pulled down, and Martin will get a chance for three. Excuse me, Suzanne Tomio. Just as Kathy Shields designed it, Victoria's offense is predicated to a large extent on the high post. Sutton, the experienced player, goes high-low. In basketball, if you can get the ball to the high post, if you're high, alive with the ball, and in the middle, you're in good shape against zones. And that's what Vic has just demonstrated. I'm not sure who the foul was on. There was a crowd. If it was on Chambers, it would have been her fifth. I missed that myself, Michael, so I don't know. Well, Chambers is number six, and she's still standing there, so we can assume that she probably has not fouled out of the game. Now, that's the eighth foul on Winnipeg, which means that Victoria is now in the bonus. That's a factor. The Vikettes, on the other hand, only have committed three fouls, so they've got still lots of room to play with. Oh, they sure do. And this is going to be a, a key stat coming down uh, at the end of the game. You've got fatigue setting in. You've got pressure defense uh, exerting itself. And to put a team on the foul line in the last five minutes of the ball game, well, you don't have the same chance to get there. That's a huge step. Victoria has lots of fouls to take if they want to. 6.05 to play in regulation. Kathy Shields' team leads by nine. Now, it's a real dilemma for Winnipeg because with Sandra Carroll carrying this team on her back for most of the tournament, right now the real key to victory is getting the ball inside. So you've got two magnificent forces pulling against one another. And how she handles this is going to affect how they play down the stretch, I think. Bert Whistle checks back in, replacing Suzanne Tomio, who did her job hitting a foul shot on the three-point play. Six minutes in counting. Kathy Shields told me before the game she had to remind herself to have confidence in the kids and to substitute throughout the game. In the big games, as a coach sometimes, you tend to go with the seniors or your best five or the five that are gelling. She's subbing throughout this game and it's paying dividends. Look at Tara Galloway break the pressure. Rebound by Jen Sutton rejected inside and Winnipeg gets a much needed turnover. Excellent defense by number eight, Jody Rock. Here's Flick. And one of the things they're not doing is stepping into the gap offensively off those low posts. So they're forcing Winnipeg to throw over the top of the defense. They've got to go inside the defense. Three points will not go. Third whistle is just now been Chambers is out of the game. Michelle Chambers has fouled out of the game, so... The veteran player that Coach Tom Kendall wanted in there no longer is. She hit a couple of key shots. Here's Keats for the baseline. And Victoria with five minutes to play now leads by 12. Now look at the low post of Winnipeg. They're standing behind those big players. Turn right there, an interception by Sutton. You know, I just get the feeling, Brian, that there's, there's, just, there's no leadership at all for Winnipeg right now. They just... I don't seem to be focused. There's a sense of just a little bit of panic, but not because they're intimidated by the strength of Victoria, but by the clock. They don't have time to come back unless everything goes well here. Here's Galloway, who's been so sharp. No good, won't go. Here's Hutchins. 
And Flick pushes the ball up the court. Nice pass, but look at Keats. Hustle back on defense and slap it away. That's one way to negate good transitional play. Winnipeg wants to push it up, but the conversion defense by Victoria has been excellent. Chambers is fouled out, and the most significant thing about what they need from her, I think, is her four years of experience. They really need that, and they lack it on the floor. That's right, and also her size. She is a strong player inside. She's a finesse player inside. So who do you go to down low? Well, with her out of the ballgame, you're going to have to count on Martin, uh, for sure, and Jody Roth, who's a great rookie, but inexperienced at the national uh, tournament play. And going to the hoop, trying to draw fouls and fouls on him. Maybe they'll call one and two. I know, I know. It's been one of those games, okay? There's nothing we can do about that. But as I said, it's a big time for the CIAU on TSN. This is the National Women's Basketball Championship. And next week, we'll have the CIAU Hockey Semifinals. Game number one at 12 Eastern. Game number four at, excuse me, game number two at 4 o'clock Eastern. And then we'll have the final uh, the following day at 4 o'clock Eastern time. So we'll show you the two semis and the final. That's next weekend. Well, lots of action coming up on TSN. And we've got the volleyball later today at 8 o'clock. But right now, it really is critical that Winnipeg get a basket and really get some leadership out here. As you say, they, they do seem a bit panicked right now, and perhaps it's the clock, four and a half to play. And they trail by 12. And was that a travel? Disastrous second half for Sandra Carroll. And nice defense by Pam Flick. Galloway went for the steal, didn't get it. Three-point attempt, won't go down. Look at Jen Sutton go up way above everybody's head and pull it down. You know, Carol, uh, she's had a poor second half, but she plays with such courage. She's not going to stop doing her thing in order to contribute to this team. And she takes the foul here on the arm of Galloway. I, I just like a player, even though it's counterproductive sometimes, but a player who misses and then comes right back down and thinks about hitting it again. Well, she's got guts. She's got courage. She's got a huge heart. And it's it's just spilled out all over this gym throughout the tournament. And uh, she hasn't been able to, to step up during the second half, but, you know, it's been three full days of action-packed basketball for her. Tara Galloway hits both. She has been a tower of strength for Victoria. You know, if you pick a player of the game, it'd be pretty tough. Galloway's been good. No question. Flick has been good. Excuse me, Keats has been good. Now, the unforced errors will kill you at this part of the game. I mean, that was a perimeter pass. It really wasn't pressure. But again, fatigue sets in. Players are getting tired now. and They've got to really suck it up. They've got to concentrate. They've got to get the job done if they're going to come back in this ballgame. Tom Kendall's got to find a way to get him back in the ballgame with a young bunch of players that he's got on the floor. He's got four second-year players and a first-year player on the floor. Pretty tough. Oh, beautiful pass to Jen Sutton, but slapped away by Cheryl Lamonti. There's experience now. You get a 5'8 guard like Galloway going down on the low post. Doesn't get intimidated. Squares up. Finds the defense coming to her and dishes. Experience teaches you that. 14 point lead. It was a close game all the way. And then at about the 11 minute mark, Victoria got it going. Now, one of the things that Victoria demonstrates, you try to look for the outstanding player. But in fact, there are five starting players, all average 10 points to 12 points during the game. Nobody dominated the play of this team. It really is a team in the truest sense of the word. Three-point attempt won't fall. Carroll finally gets something to go down. 2.40 to play. It's a 12-point lead for the big fight catch. He's got full court press, but you know, did she she travel? Did. Yes, she did. Well, she turned that ball over, but you know, Victoria is experienced against the press. They play with it every day in practice, so it's going to be tough to come back. It's the Vikettes by 12. 
The pasta. They loved it. The sauces. They're great. The cooking. So easy. Introducing McCain Pasta Magic. Simply microwave the sauce, run the frozen pasta under hot water for a few seconds, and magically tender just right pasta. Combine them for perfect pasta and perfect sauce. Fettuccine. Alfredo. Pasta salad. My next shopping. New McCain Pasta Magic. Delicious, perfectly prepared pasta and sauce in less than three minutes. It's magic. It's McCain. There's Sandra Carroll, so terrific in the first half. She keeps shooting, but it just has been a tough second half. Two for 13, and tough for a young player. But I, as I say, you really admire the fact that she's just willing to keep trying to get it in the hoop. Well, you know, your tendency is to focus on her, but you can't bring uh, a win or a loss on the shoulders of any one player. The real, the real uh, factor in this game was the adjustment that Victoria made in the second half to negate the second shots that Winnipeg got in the first half. Cutting off the offensive rebounding had a huge effect on Winnipeg's offense. 2.30 to play, 12-point lead. And she drew the foul from Keats. See, and here's where that statistic shows up of not being in bonus now. Winnipeg can't get to the line even on that kind of a foul. Cheryl Lamotti, Andrea Hutchins, just a young bunch of players. And it falls for Cheryl Lamotti, her first two of the game. Full court pressure, doesn't turn anything up. Keats looks out from behind. And here's Galloway. Two minutes to play. The Jen Sutton. It's a 10-point lead. Kendall wanted to travel. Uh, Galloway and Van Arle are, are great guards. They know what to do against pressure. They keep their poise well. And you're going to see the ball in their hands most of the time down a stretch here. Bert Whistle. And Bert Whistle drills it home. And maybe that's the national championship. One characteristic she has is a great turnaround jump shot from the post. And she just nailed it. Here's Lamonti. She hit last time down the floor, and this one won't go. Look at the job by Galloway, gaining position on the bigger player. One and a half to play in regulation. But it's unlikely we'll go to overtime. The bike catch. Now, you're going to see Victoria take their time here. They're going to make Winnipeg come to them because they are in the bonus. Three seconds on Cheryl Bertwistle, or Sherry Bertwistle, and... So we should see quick shots by Winnipeg, but we should see patience by Victoria in the last minute and a half. Well, Paul, look at Keats aggressively pull it down, and they push it up the floor. Here's Sutton. Sutton's going to take it to the hoop, and number nine, Andrea Hutchins, had a hand. I'll tell you, that was a great move in the open field. She lowered her shoulder, and she was not going to stop until she got to the rim or until she got clubbed. She got clubbed, and now she gets on the foul line. An 80% foul shoot. Veteran player, Jenny Sutton, in her fifth year, will go out of champion. Well, that was one of her goals at the beginning of the year. She wanted to taste victory at the CIU National Tournament, and it looks like the gold medal is going to be draped around her. Do they hand out medals at these things? They hand out medals, trophies, all sorts of hard work. I, I never heard it referred to like that. As a matter of fact, they have beautiful rings for the championship this year. Well, she could put that around her neck on a chain. Well, she put that around her finger and wear the medal. Do they get medals? Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes, absolutely. You would know. How many did you win? Well, we, we have a few in the trophy case, Michael. Here's Carol. She has really got a great release. I mean, all of a sudden, the ball's just gone, but unfortunately, it hasn't gone into the hoop in the second half. 37 seconds to play. The Vikettes bring the ball up, perhaps for the last time, as they will win the sixth national championship for Kathy Seals. Good ball movement as they find Audrey Dennison down low. Well, so it's been a great season. Undefeated in Canada for the Victoria Vikettes. Three for Sandra Carroll, but it's much too late again. You go back to about the 11-minute mark when the Vikettes turned a close game into a national championship. Five seconds to play. And that's it. The Victoria Vikettes have done it with a tremendous second half. Tremendous season, undefeated in Canada.
32 wins for Kathy Shields, another national championship, her sixth in the trophy case. Coach hopes for, I think, and I, I shouldn't speak for coaches. You're the coach here, but it's it's a close.